September 18th until tonight. Correct. Um, my name is Dan Princick. This is my wife, Nicole uh, Princick. And okay. uh, we wanted to up here in person. Uh, we are actually asking for another continuance. We are currently still in the middle of the construction of our second story addition. Uh, at this time, uh, we're finding it just not reasonable for us to be able to uh, satisfactorily become compliant with the uh, deck issue. Um, the area is still being used for uh, our construction on the second story. Um, we're in the middle of spending close to a quarter million dollars on this uh, uh, other addition. Our contractor is working on that. We have actually spoken with the town um, building inspector uh, just recently uh, about asking for this and we'd like to see if we could have this extended until um, at least another couple of months so that we can deal with it as the rest of the project is closing. Would you like to try to pick a specific date that you um, I believe our contractor and the building inspector had come to some sort of agreement um, that we would make sure that this was dealt with before the uh, final inspection on the house. We're just going through the, I believe, electrical and plumbing uh, <coughs> inspections this week. Uh, so we're hoping to get the installation in uh, once this week or next week is closed. After that, it's all finished work inside, so the majority of the materials that are outside will be gone. Um, we're not living there currently. We're living with in-laws up in Tewksbury. Um, it's just, it's not a situation that we could do, I think, in a satisfactory manner. Um, I've looked at the plans. I actually took a look at the, the town um, zoning bylaws, and my understanding was that a, an accessory structure, or one that's unattached, had only a five-foot setback, so we had planned to come uh, before you to ask if it was acceptable for us to remove the middle portion of the structure so that it was no longer attached. Um, thus, the uh, portion that was seven feet uh, from the, the, the rear side yard setback would be compliant. Um, after reading through that and discussing it with another friend who's a contractor and is familiar with some of these laws, he pointed out that that would not actually be considered an unattached property, uh, unattached structure, because it's still within 10 feet of the extension. Um, so that plan that we had considered is not feasible. Uh, again, a little more time, we're hoping that we can come up with something that can save us uh, part of that deck um, so that we can reuse the portion that we cut out. Uh, there is also a situation where the, the structure that's in ground now is helping to hold up our retaining wall. Uh, I know the diagram that you guys have does include that um, as a part of it. That was one of the factors in building the wooden wall that we put in that's attached to the deck. So those two structures are connected. If we are to remove that portion, um, it's been two years now, and I'm not sure how uh, strong that's going to be. So I want to make sure that we have a design professional take a look at that and make sure that we can do that without uh, affecting the uh, retaining wall. So we just are, are asking for some more time so that we can deal with this so that we can take care of it. A month? Two months? Um, at this point, two months or three months would be great. I know when I sp spoke with Mark yesterday, he said that there was an agreement, I, I believe he said February, um, which is the date that we're hoping to be done with the house. Again, our contractor is working on the rest of this project, and in order to uh, deal with the secondary project, uh, the we just don't have the resources to it. The, in the winter, winter is a, a little bit of a problem, like trying to dig up a deck in the ground when the uh, ground is frozen. <laughs> And, I mean, obviously, I'd prefer uh, so, several months I mean, if, if, if you're willing to, to give us a spring, and then we could, if we have to rip the whole thing up, I guess we have to wait till the snow melts to do that. Um, I, I will have to put in new footers to support the deck as it stands. Uh, that's not something that I think is reasonable <laughs> at this point in time. What are our dates for February and March? February. Thank you. We are looking at two nine two five two nineteen three four three eighteen. About March three four three three eighteen. 
Yes. Uh, sorry, sorry. Can, can I interject here? Sure. Number one, I, I applaud the applicants for coming and, and discussing this with us rather than a letter or an email, which we get many times. I, I much prefer to do it this way. And I was wondering if we could hear from the building inspector maybe his viewpoint on this. So obviously, he's been talking to the applicants and stuff, and I'd like to get his view on sure. this. <clears throat> so as you remember, when the applicants first applied for the building permit, we found a zoning violation and um, such with the, the existing deck on the side lot lines. I made an agreement with uh, the contractor, who I believe is your uncle, My uncle. your uncle, um, that I would give them the permit for the second floor on the, on the agreement that they would come before the board to either be granted a variance or to be denied and then remove a portion of the deck. So that's sort of where we stand now in talking with the applicants. Um, I thought it was feasible that if we waited to late winter to give them more time to get some of the construction materials off the deck up to the second floor and constructed that um, I didn't think the timeline was crucial. Um, the important thing was that they came to try to rectify the situation, and that's that's what I really wanted, and that's what they've been doing. So I have no problem with any extension of time. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, John. Um, I, I guess it's just the uh, the idea of these uh, continuances and the extensions of the continuances. Um, now we're going to be closing in on five or six months past the initial. Uh, request before the board. Um, realistically, uh, are we looking for something? I don't know the answer to this. Realistically, are we looking for something for a conclusion in uh, late February or early March? Or now are we looking at something in uh, April, May, or June of 2020? Um, if this is the situation, I would prefer that uh, we just withdraw. Not that I'm suggesting that you do that, because you can always ask for the board to make a room. <clears throat> um, and come back when, when we can actually move on something and not have to have it continued for a lengthy period of time. We've run into that several times already this year, and it's caused a um, tremendous amount of upheaval, you might call it, um, with our other cases that are coming before the board. Uh, especially some of the larger projects. So, uh, my question is, are we realistically going to be able to do something with this by mid-February or early March, or are we talking about another extension on top of that? Well, my honest answer? Mm -hmm. Realistically, if they came before us or before the board in February or March, there may be one more extension because things might not be quite wrapped up or ready to move on. I think the difference between this extension and the previous extensions from other applicants where they would come in or write an email every month requesting an extension to the next month, requesting a continuance to the next month. I, be, I think this is different if you're going to jump ahead three months. It's not tying up anything in the meantime as far, the, as, far as other hearings. But of course it's, you know, the preview of the board, not me. If I might interject. Following up on what John has said, the application currently is for a variance for a deck that exists. Now I'm hearing there may be, have to be another variance with the structure that you're putting in. No. What structure? No, 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 no. It's the same thing. Wait. We're talking about ripping out the, the deck that we have. The building permit was granted. We're talking about um, ripping right. it away. Oh, right. like I'm just, the considerations I'm trying to make for how that will affect the structures that are already there. Um, we we attempted to improve drainage when we put the deck in. That was part of the, the rationale for and things, but putting that there. We had water damage in our basement in um, so we fixed March of 2010 of when we moved in, right after we moved in. Um, I'm sure you all remember the, the, floods the rains that year. That year. Uh, so that was something that we were trying to uh, fix with the, the hillside there. Um, uh, again, I, I, I'm just hoping that you'll take into account the fact that we are here, we're, we're trying to take care of this issue, but it's just not something that we can do immediately. I'm not sure what the 
the timeline is. The for timeline is for a lot, project. There's a lot yeah. of situations where we've had continuous, 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 continuous. I understand that, sir. Okay. Yeah. And 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 sometimes there's a justification for it, real good reason for it. And sometimes it's just because maybe people need to decide what they're going to do a little better beforehand before they get into the project and start making changes. Okay. Uh, but uh, so John's point is well taken. Uh, the only concern I have is it would be nice if we could focus in on, a, on an extension that hopefully would not require another. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think we we'd all like that the, yeah. to solve this situation yeah, so that future. everybody's happy. Right. Absolutely. But I guess the thing is, does anyone else have any other comments on this? Yes, Yeah, just real quickly. You said you had problems with the frozen ground. I don't know if uh, March is going to be yeah. enough I, I don't time. think it's going to be a lot better I, either. That's why yeah, I'm saying I, I don't know. I'm comfortable giving you something maybe late April um, and my other question is how substantially different is the relief going to be come April are you going to have a different plot plan and everything as well as and far as, as uh, no, I, I need to discuss this with somebody who is familiar with tearing apart we have um, to think if we have to rip it up or move in, or move it our other idea was to move so it's, it's, it's over too far and we were thinking of li essentially lifting it up and moving it the other direction that was our there. other plan but we have to rip. I mean, it's it's only yeah. like this far off I got, the ground. It's still in the works. It's still figuring it out. I, I totally and get that. I'm just letting you know that if things do change from this application to the next, then it should be a new plot plan to reflect that. And so, are you, you saying we would to vote on it? Need to reapply or? Yeah, I don't understand. I have not. Well, we would just submit understand. new materials, like an updated plot Absolutely. plan, yeah. showing it's where the deck may end. I, I've tried to do some research oh. on my own. Again, I'm, I'm sure you guys are very busy as well. Uh, but from what I've seen with most. Um, variances that are granted there's substantially more information that's provided to you guys so that you can see what it is that we'd expected to see uh, this is all new to me so I'm, I'm trying to give you my due diligence and make sure that you're provided with the information that would help you to understand what we would like to do and, and to make that compliant um, like actually up until about two days ago we thought that idea of cutting out the there's like it's kind of like a tiered it's into a wall it's into the ground that the deck is only like maybe this far off the ground the whole thing and the, the part that's right off of our porch is the first part and then there's the second section and then it steps up kind of into our wall which is kind of like this so uh, anyway we were thinking we could cut that middle section out and then like it was going to be detached and we, we were going to bring a whole drawing of that to show you but then we found that other rule <laughs> That amendment that realized that plan wasn't going to work. So. Uh, I actually have another question. If we continue to a date certain and it's too far in the future, is there a way that we could actually move up the date if there's availability? I think so. Um, I would have to look into that because we make a motion to continue to a certain date. Um, so to move up. I think we would have to notify neighbors and try to go through some sort of process, but All right, never yeah. Mind. <laughs> All right. Oh my Eric, do you have any comment, Hillary? Okay. So I think we are. Uh, what I'm hearing is perhaps a desire to continue to whatever the second um, meeting in April. Is. April? Do you want to go that far? Um, well, what are the dates? Right. Um, April would be April 1st or April 15th. Um, well, in light of what we've talked about and, and the concern that you may have, Andrew, <coughs> uh, I would probably say, uh, in less, rather than go too far in advance, maybe cut back a little bit so that we don't have to re-advertise re and whatever, go through the whole thing again. But the reality is that we could have an early spring and by the end of March, um, it could be all, com it could be all, almost all completed. Um, so I would, I would say. I think March is an appropriate time frame, just in my eyes to give them a chance to Review some new thoughts, ideas, plans, and criteria. And again, if it requires a continuation from there, then that's that's fine. There's no time requirements for a variance application, so I think it's okay. 
So that would be 318. Yeah. That's what I would say. I think March is behind it to myself. It, it's, it, it's, it's changed in the past 25, 40 years in regards to construction. They, they go all, all year long now with construction. Mm -hmm. they, they don't necessarily stop for winter or anything else. They have the equipment to get through a frost or anything like that. I'm sure the building inspector would be working with you. Nothing's going to be put in if it would be unsafe or on frozen ground or anything like that. It, uh, it would be adequate. So I, I would say March, my, myself, second meeting in March. Would be is, there, is there any other further comment from the board? The only other suggestion that I might make is that uh, sort of everybody knows what's going on, not the board, but um, maybe staff. Then on a uh, regular basis, regular basis, I don't know, is every maybe three or four weeks, check in with uh, the uh, building commissioner, let them know exactly where things are at so that um, should we start approaching that, at least the board would have an idea of where things are going to. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, I'll entertain a motion to continue this case until March 18th of 2020. So moved. Second. Second. John. Voting members would be Nick, Bob, myself, John, and Eric. All in favor? Five zero zero. Okay. Thank you very Thank much. You. To Hopefully, we can send you some updates in the meantime. Yeah. And be prepared. To We're always available here in town hall to help. Sign. Thank you. Thank you. Next case this evening is 19-14, uh, 104 Salem Street. Uh, this case was opened on July 17th of this year. And it's been continued for the fourth time until tonight. And we have a letter from Attorney Brian McGrail, read this, ap read this uh, applicant's request and his application, and it says, on behalf of my client, HB Development Corporation, I respectfully request that you continue this matter until your second meeting in December of 2019. We expect to resolve this matter in an agreeable and acceptable fashion with the building commissioner in the very near future. Furthermore, if this continuance is granted, on behalf of my client, HB Development Corp., the time for the Board of Appeals to render and or file a decision with the town clerk is extended until January 31, 2020. Yours truly, Brian D. McGrail. Uh, can you give us a little... Uh, the, late, the latest on that update. Uh, they, we did reach an agreement on um, the conversion of the the home. Um, they have they currently have a foundation permit, so that I would say they're part way there. I, I'm I can't speak for Attorney McGrill. I think the reason they're continuing is not and not withdrawing at this time, is because we have a clause in the agreement that. If the existing house, by accident or misfortune, happens to not make it through the process, then all bets are off. So then they would be coming back to the board for the original appeal of my decision. That's the only thing I could gather. But the whole thrust of this thing has been to try to convert this house. Uh, into one which fully complies with the zoning laws, correct? Correct. Which would essentially not require. Right. So. This board. Right. So footnote one for the conversion goes with the original house. If 
they're going to pick up the original house and move it to another location a lot and redo foundations. I didn't want to take a chance of that house disappearing accidentally or a crane dropping something and then them thinking they can still put a two family in because the footnote one goes with the original structure. Right, right. So if something happens in the meantime, they could still try on their original request. But I think the expectation on the part of all of us is that, that it listen to this is that it ultimately is going to not require our approval at all. Yeah, I would say in the next couple of weeks we would know because the house would be back in the location and right. would be okay. continuing by right. Okay. Any discussion for anybody on the board? This will be the fifth extension. Yeah. Uh, Mark, uh, they're going to put the house back in the same location that it is now after putting a new foundation underneath it, or they're moving it to a new foundation and leaving it there. They're taking it off the old foundation temporarily. Digging a new foundation that's in slightly a different location but still conforms to zoning, putting the old box there, and building the new addition for the second unit. And so it's not going back, it's the original house, but it's not going back in the exact original, definitely not the same foundation and not the exact footprint. Okay. And the, uh, the intent is the addition to the house is not accessory proper to the existing structure it would be a second unit. second unit correct okay um, so so basically mark correct me if I'm wrong and my thinking if everything goes according to the applicant's plan move the house pour a new foundation put the existing house back onto it and convert it to a two-family, they don't need a special permit for that or anything. It, everything I, would be, you would issue It would be by right, and I would think they, they would be right. withdrawing their application. Okay. But if something happened, whatever, uh, they have a new foundation, no house now, Correct. So they have to build a house on top of that. Correct. They would have to come back to the board for probably in that particular case a variance, I would think, if they were looking to build a two-family in that area then. Uh, we, we, I, I don't recall what the original application yeah. was. I think it was an appeal. Well, I think it was, it was just an appeal of my not decision in regards to them converting it to a two-family house. So if something happened to the existing house and they had to build a whole new structure on top of a whole new foundation, they would be coming back to us for a variance. So I, to me, I personally, I don't see a continuance after five continuances already. What this is going to gain them, it's, it's either a variance or it's going to be by right and period. That's it. Well, if they're successful. Enough, I mean, you know, we've gone through this, and, and then, you know. Well, I, I think that if all goes well, it's a moot point. If yeah. something happens and doesn't go well, they're going to revert back to their first application, which would be an appeal of my decision. Of then the decision. board would make a decision whether it's an agreement with me or not an agreement with me. And then they would move to the next step based on that decision. And then that may be followed by a variance application or maybe fall to a, the next level of legal matter. Yeah. Well, the other alternative, why, why could, why, it might possibly be a whole new application. That's it. it. You yeah. draw this one and a whole new one. That's, you know. It might be the cleanest one to move I, to I, I, if you I ever had to come to that. To, to me, you know, we, we, we've listened to this since, uh, when did this originally get opened up in? Uh, July. 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 Yeah, July 17th. Yes. And here we are still asking for continuations right. after I, I got here four. It's tonight, the, the fifth this night is the tonight. Fifth. This will be the fifth. Now we're going on to the sixth continuation. Now we're going on to the next year. Yeah, also. and then we're going into the next Which year. It bothers me no way. Come on. It, it's... Yeah. I mean, the, in defense of the applicants, their, their, their alteration approach versus what they first applied for, still wasn't cutting it. 
So they were meeting with me, Andrew, and Julie um, to come up with something that we felt was in harmony with the intent of that part of the bylaw. So they have came back with a couple revisions, and that's why it's only been recently that they actually got their permit. I know, I know it's not defense. I'm just saying that's the reason for the timeline. Mm -hmm. Now, I... What's our, um, you know, I think I've stated in my position, and that's it, yeah. What's our last meeting in December? May 18th. And how many cases do we have? Zero. Zero. Um, I don't see waiting until January of 2020 to resolve this, and if, if Mark indicates that it looks like within a couple of weeks we will know one way or the other, I'd rather wait until December, clean it up one way or the other, and move on. Let's not take this case into 2020. Well, they've asked for a continuous to the 18th of December. Okay. 18th of what? December. December. Oh, I, I thought it was January. No, no yeah. December. They're saying that that would they. They, they would extend it to what? Uh, the second meeting in December. Correct. That's what they were looking at. That's and they correct. Will, they will extend the time for the decision yeah. until January. Until, until January. January. Okay. So right now it's December 18th. No. Right. Can we let them know some way that we're really not excited about any more of those? It's, it. it's time to cut bait. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think we might have said that at the last meeting. We did. Yeah. So, it's, uh, so tell them we meet at this my time. Position. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Any other discussion on this? Okay, I'll entertain a motion to accept their request to continue until December 18th. So moved. John moves. Second, anybody? Second. Second by Nick. All in favor? Five zero zero. No. I'm opposed. Oh, excuse me. Four. All. Yes. All opposed. I'm opposed. One. Four. Four one. <laughs> it's approved. Okay. Mr. Chairman, yes. before you move on to the next case, um, I'm going to recuse myself from uh, sitting this next case um, as I have a conflict. Um, and I know that there is five members here who can happily able to hear the case, so I'm going to... Okay. That means that the voting members on this will be Hillary, Eric, myself, Bob, and Nick. Okay. All right. The next case this evening is number 19 26, 287 Lowell Street. Since this is the first time, this case is being heard. Believe it or not, it's not a continuance. Uh, I will read the legal notice. Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing in the Select Board's meeting room at Town Hall, 16 Long Street, Reading, Massachusetts, on Wednesday, November 20, 2019, at 7 p.m. on the application of David Traniello on behalf of Gary Bonarosa. That, did I get it right? It's good. Good job. Good job. Trust. Pursuant to Mass General Law 40A, uh, Section 6 and Section 9, for a special permit under Reading, Reading Zoning Bylaw, Sections 5.3.2, 5.4, and 7.2, to request a finding slash special permit to allow a change of use on the property located at 287 Bull Street in Reading, Massachusetts. Unless there's an objection, I'll will dispense with the reading uh, with the reading of the abutters uh, list, except to say that the abutters were notified. As were the following: the select board, the police department, the building department, department, the health department, engineering division, fire department, town clerk, conservation commission, assessor's office, CPDC, 
members and associate members of the Board of Appeals, as well as the planning boards of Wakefield, North Reading, Woburn, Linfield, Stoneham, and Wilmington. Testimony before this board is taken under oath, so if you think you may want to speak, please stand and raise your right hand. Anybody here who thinks they may want to speak, please stand now and raise your right hand. Even if you haven't decided yet. Okay. All right. Just if you please take stand. the oath, you don't have to speak. You don't have to speak. Yeah. But if you do All speak, right. you have to take the oath. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Would you please okay. stand? I swear that the testimony given by me before this board will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. If the answer is I do. I do. Thank you. And David, I'm going to turn it over to you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good Welcome evening, members. Back. Welcome back. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's nice to be back. Uh, good evening, members of the board. Mr. Chairman, again, for the record, David Tronello, and I represent uh, Gary Bonarosa as trustee of the Bonarosa 2003 Realty Trust, who is the current owner of the property at 287 Lowell Street and the operator for over 35 years of the P&S convenience store at that location. Uh, as we all know, the store has been a Reading fixture uh, under various owners since the 1930s, uh, which predated zoning, which will be pertinent to our discussion. Uh, our application tonight takes into account a couple of different factors. Uh, the history of the retail use, uh, as well as the town uh, and the board's uh, institutional uh, dealings with the owner and the property uh, dating back uh, to the 1940s. Uh, we're also going to focus on the law, of course, uh, and then factors granting the support, uh, uh, factors in support of the granting of this petition. Uh, the uh, little background, Mr. Bonarosa uh, wants to cease operation of the convenience store operation uh, and ensure the continuation of the legal use of the business. Uh, these are personal and family reasons. Unfortunately, my, my client has uh, uh, been dealing with as a caregiver for uh, ill relatives and disabled relatives and that has taken up more and more of his time and he wishes to devote more time to that uh, which means he can't run the store uh, while he's devoting his time to that. Uh, Mark Tango Plumbing, another long-standing Reading-based family-owned business, currently has a lease option agreement on the property uh, and wishes to operate a retail service uh, plumbing showroom and store on the property again to ensure the legal use of the property and the continuation of the legal use of the property. Any further uh, efforts by Mr. Tango to pursue financing uh, are conditioned upon uh, receiving uh, permitting from the town to continue the legal use of the property. Uh, so uh, the real question for the board, uh, and we're here to work collaboratively to get the answer to that question, is uh, how we get there. Uh, so in my submission to the board, to the town, I've provided uh, several options for consideration, uh, providing the board with some discussion points so that obviously we can work to uh, let the board use its discretion in crafting a sound decision and motion for approval. Uh, and I start with a, a simple premise. Uh, so what we're asking for today is a change from one permitted legal use of the property to a different legal use of the property. And I've used this so many times that my clients are sick of hearing it, but we're changing from, asking for a change from red apples to green apples. Same apples. Uh, but that use is, uh, has a much lesser impact on the town, the neighborhood, the community, and the property itself. So uh, if you will allow me to, I'd like to take the board through some of the submissions uh, and exhibits that I provided in support of our application. Please. Uh, there are a couple of things that I'd like to, as I go through this, uh, point to a couple of inaccuracies in my submission and some clarifications that I'd like to make as well. Uh, but a little bit of the, again, the, the, the property's located in an S15 zoning district, uh, bounded on three sides by Lowell Street, Grove Street, and Deville Terrace. Uh, half acre of land. It's also in the Aquifer Protection District. Uh, it has wetlands in the rear, uh, but it is conforming to all required setbacks. Uh, it should be noted that there uh, is no proposed change to the exterior uh, of the building uh, in connection with our application. So since the 1930s, the property's been operating as a retail use. Uh, it was originally owned by a Zitzo family, uh, and they uh, operated as a convenience store. The records of the town date back, uh, and date back to an application with the 
1954 application to the ZBA, acknowledging the retail use continuing to the 1970s when the Board of Appeals allowed the then owner to rebuild the facility following a fire and granting a variance for the continued retail use. Uh, the current owners have continued to operate the convenience store, uh, continuing that use, uh, have filed several applications with the board. Uh, most notably, they added, and here's one change, one second floor apartment to the retail structure. Mine says two. Uh, and that's in keeping with the residential district. Uh, so the lot, the building, and the retail use predate the zoning bylaw. This, uh, the second, uh, the second floor apartment, comport with the residential district, and the property has ample parking, exterior parking. The current convenience store operates from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. seven days. A so let's go through some of those uh, submissions. Uh, so we have a building permit dated 1944, October 2nd, 1944. The jacket on this file was about three inches thick with uh, records dating back to, to the 1940s. So I just provided a, a sliver of that for you. Uh, so the building was classified then, and the addition then on that building permit was classified as a storeroom, commercial use. Board of Appeals decision dated March, of March 30th, 1954, acknowledging the retail store use in a residential area and that the petitioner's proposal at the time proposing an addition to the structure would in no way affect the residential area. Uh, and that was a retail structure at the time. Uh, the decision dated 19, uh, July 1, 1970, case number 1970-23, where the board granted a special permit and a variance that was recorded in the Registry of Deeds appropriately, allowing the pre-existing non-conforming retail store uh, to continue following a fire and authorized reconstruction. Uh, that variance, obviously, as we know, runs with the property. The Zoning Board of Appeals uh, had another decision, issued another decision in May 20th of 1982, excuse me, case number 1982-14, where the board made a finding that the continuation of the retail use granted in 1970 was appropriate per the recorded variance, again, making a finding that the variance was uh, appropriate. Uh, the next paragraph I'd like to uh, amend in that I included the March 20, 2008 variance only to show uh, that the decision, um, the 2008 decision, uh, made a finding that the historical pre existing non conforming use of the first four premises uh, was not pr proposing any new conforming, uh, non conforming use. Uh, and not to, uh, th th there was actually relief granted during that, uh, in that decision, but, but the, uh, the property owner didn't follow through and actually uh, make any changes pursuant to that. Uh, and then we have at least one, if not more, property cards that the town uh, has on record identifying the property as commercial and uh, residential. So uh, the current uh, application seeks a finding and a special, a finding a special permit uh, or uh, some relief uh, under Chapter 48, Section 6. I think uh, given my uh, statement of, excuse me, lack of reliance on that 19, uh, sorry, that 2008 variance, that I don't believe that Sections 532 and 54 are applicable uh, anymore. I certainly leave that to the discretion of the board, and if the board decides we need to withdraw that portion of it, we would be willing to, but, but I think in support of this application, uh, I'd like to just point out the following that may be obvious, but just for the sake of getting it on the record. The operation of a retail or service use of this, this property pre-existed, pre chapter 40A, pre-existed any zoning, and such I would, as such I would invoke the provisions of 40A section 6, which gives the board and the town limited jurisdiction over uh, the property. But we're here and we're submitting to the jurisdiction of the town, but I also submit that as, as a, uh, to get it on the record. The current retail use was allowed by a 1970 variance uh, uh, granted by this board, or that iteration of this board. Uh, the uh, operation of the, the plumbing service uh, retail business would include no exterior alteration of the property. Uh, as shown on the plot plan that we submitted uh, with our application. 
uh, as uh, properties within the Act for Protection District and certainly uh, would only require uh, minimal interior renovations uh, in conformance with code. We also submitted an architectural drawing of what those proposed internal renovations might look like as well with our application. Uh, in keeping with Section 7.2, the pro property contains a residential unit. Uh, also, the property, the proposed use of the continued use of a retail service business at the property, if we're looking at this under a special permit analysis, uh, would not be more substantially more detrimental to the current use as a retail establishment. And let me go through a couple of a uh, couple of ways in which that will be the case. We have some significant reductions here. So the current operating hours will be reduced from from where they are now, 6A to 8P, seven days a week, to 7A to 5P, five days a week, obviously with other appointments as necessary, but those would be the operating hours. So we're talking about a 50% reduction in the operating hours of the establishment. The property would only be occupied by company employees, reducing the transient traffic uh, effects on the neighborhood and, and uh, public patronage. Any invitees to the building would be by appointment only for the most part, so a lot less transient traffic in and out all day long as with a convenience store operation. We're expecting, and again, we didn't do a traffic study, but we're expecting that reduction in traffic to and from the property and the surrounding roadways would be reduced by approximately 75 to 80 percent in that you don't have in and out traffic all day long. Uh, you would have employees arrive in the morning with their personal vehicles, pick up company vehicles, head off to their daily job, perhaps some employees or invitees during the day, and then employees return at the end of the day, return the company vehicles and pick up their personal vehicles. So a lot less impact on the neighborhood, a lot less impact um, on the neighbors, a lot more predictability with regard to who's in and who's out of that property. Um, we should also make note, uh, for better or for worse, that company vehicles have been parked at the property by agreement of the two uh, parties that you see here for at least the past six years as a, an arrangement between the two of them. Um, and again, uh, if the board uh, should choose to, to, to extend the, the variance, again, we can certainly talk about options, perhaps. Uh, we would entertain certain discussions on any conditions that the board might want to add to any approval or uh, any relief that might be granted. Uh, so in summary, uh, and you have all the materials in front of you, uh, we request that pursuant to the 1970 variance uh, under the auspices of Section 48, uh, Chapter 48, Section 6, uh, continue to find that the retail use is, is a proper extension of the current legal use permitted by variance uh, so that the uh, retail plumbing service uh, is allowed to operate and is not substantially more detrimental uh, to the zoning district or to the town of Reading. Thank you very much for your consideration. We would appreciate uh, any feedback and questions. Okay, David. Thank you. Uh, I did not receive any memo that Mark might have put out on this thing in my package. Did anybody else receive it in theirs? I did not. <laughs> so, the, so there was no written memo. Okay. I, All right. So just for clarification, I had a phone conversation with Gary um, six or eight months ago. I met Mr. Tango in the office four to six months ago. I've talked to the attorney. So everything was uh, verbal. Okay. And um, there's no written denial per se because he was going to present his case based on historical facts and previous uh, variance and special permits. Uh, I, I guess I, I, I have a question, and maybe, maybe it's to, to Andrew or to Ma. Uh, what are we dealing with here? A request for a special permit, or is this just an extension of a use that's already allowed, or, or a continuation of a use that's already allowed? Uh, or something that, to that effect. It looked to, to me like it, it's actually a special permit you're looking for in this. I think that's up to the board on how they feel comfortable, whether it's a special permit extension of a non-conforming use, finding that the use is by right under the variance, or a use, another use variance is required, or 
some other form of relief is required. So, um, the public notice yeah, says a, specifically a, permit. a permit under the thing to allow a change of use. Yeah. But I think in the write-up that David has put forth here, he's saying, you know, if there's another way yeah, I, that I it this look be, at is it better as done as or has to be done, then let's yeah. it needs to be considered, and okay? But the request is for yeah. a permit for no, changing. That, that's kind of what I'm wondering okay. there now, but that's maybe for the discussion <clears throat> here at the end what, what we need to do uh, on that. Uh, a couple of other questions I had, maybe maybe for Attorney Trinell, is uh, signage. What are we talking? Do you know anything about what future signage might be? Obviously, PNS has a big sign on the front of their building now. Uh, we look at that to come down, and there's going to be a big sign up, uh, Mock Tango Plumbing, or what? When the, when the time comes and the change of use is allowed, uh, any changes to signage will obviously have to go through the proper channels, applications, permitting, time review uh, as necessary, and certainly we would be willing to entertain conditions if the board would like the condition for that, but I think that's understood under, right. the, under the local bylaw. It would be... Yeah, any, 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 future, any future signage would be through, through the bylaw and right. working with the building department. Right. Right. Okay. Now, another question I had, and, and you have quite, quite a, uh, a unique site plan here <laughs> in that a number of the parking spaces appear to be on town land. Uh, on on is, is there any agreement between the town and the property owner in regards to using that for parking or so uh, there's been a long-standing uh, circular if you will discussion right. slash agreement so ultimately there was a discussion that originated with the owner of the state highway out in front of the building okay it's a state highway. and with the town uh, to provide for less intrusive uh, ingress and egress to the property. So there was an agreement put in place. I have not seen a copy of it. Okay. But I understand there is an existing agreement, memorandum of understanding, that the curb that is there allows the parking lot use on the state highway, town roadway, uh, as such for safety purposes. I get that right. No, so can I just... Uh, I'm sorry, if he, has, if, he has, if he has any other questions. Okay, yeah, I, I, I could see that. I, I know, uh, yeah, that was, uh, Lowell Street was what, uh, widened there at one point there, uh, uh, heading up towards uh, 93, et cetera, and it's all state highway. Okay, so the, there, is, there is something in regards to that agreement, in regards to the use of that, you might say property, the same property or town property. Yeah. That's my understanding. We just don't know right. where it is. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, <it's>, yeah. <laughs> Boy, if, if, if you're hoping Mastrot has it, I don't know about that. <laughs> I'm sorry? If you're hoping Mastrot has that agreement, good luck. Yeah, we haven't gone down that road yet. Yeah, I wouldn't either. Yeah. Uh, on that. Uh, Okay. Yeah, looking looking at the whole application as as a whole, I I don't have an issue of it with it, and I, I think if if it's a special permit that is to be to be done, I think it would be under seven point two, and I do believe that the work or or the the future uh, uh, use of the property would be less intrusive. Uh, to the neighborhood, to the town, then what is there now? Number one, with the hours, etc. Uh, another question I did have, though, too. Now, in in your uh, write-up, you noted that the what the retail or the commercial help portion is 34 percent, right? And the well, that was residential I, is 66. I corrected that, and maybe I wasn't as as clear. Uh, that was the proposal of the property owner that was approved 
uh, in a 2008 uh, 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 special permit, sorry, okay. uh, but that the property owner didn't act upon that. making the changes to the property that would have resulted in that percentage switch. Okay. So, because he didn't make that change. So, 7525. Yeah. Okay. Right, around, right around about. Uh, well, then I guess my question is, do, is, is there any change considered in regards to expansion of the commercial use as opposed to residential or is the resident is it all going to stay the same residential commercial your crystal ball is as good as mine and mine's cracked mr redford <laughs> but but uh at this time my application doesn't include uh any requests for any exterior changes or expansion of the building <laughs> if once the building changes hands much like the signage uh, any changes would have to go through proper channels, proper applications, proper permitting. We have Act for Protection. We have wetlands. Uh, certainly, uh, you know other zoning requirements. I mean, relief was granted years ago in that 2008 variance that allowed for expansion. And so, if that relief is still available, and I haven't researched whether or not the bylaw has changed, that would amend the nature of that relief then I don't suppose it would be out of the realm of possibility that somebody could apply for that very same or similar relief um, but I don't know again I, I don't I don't know the future I, I know what I know now and what's proposed today okay it, 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 is it am I correct in my understanding that uh, Mark Tango plumbing has actually been leasing portion of that the, the use of that property for storage of uh, uh, or for use of his trucks etc and, and kind of a staging area or, or, or a supply He's storing area. his vehicles yeah warehouse area six years say. yeah and I understand that there is a garage that currently has uh, some that's what I thought junk, <laughs> if you I've seen it uh, some materials in it that are that are in the garage portion of the facility uh -huh. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Nick, while we're at this side, I'll... Uh, yeah, sure. I'm pretty much going to echo most of that. I don't see how this use is any more detrimental. I mean, we've already had the trucks in the neighborhood the last so many years or so. It wouldn't be a change of scenery, I assume. Um, so short of how we give you the relief, which I'm leaning towards a special permit under 7.2, I don't see with what you're presenting in front of us. Um, any issues with it. Hillary. <laughs> I had highlighted the exact same um, 7.2 as um, the new use not being any further um, non-conforming. So I agree with what Nick and Bob have said previously. Eric? Uh, <coughs> I guess we have like Three options, right? So for the or more, or maybe more, but <laughs> three potential ways forward. So, David, so you, I'm, when I was going through it without the building uh, denial letter, I was just trying to figure out what was going to bring you here. You know. So I see in the accessory uses for residential, uh, both accessory convenience store and accessory retail services or retail store, both are not permitted, and. I guess just as a point of clarification, uh, when I was reading your petition, you know, we were really trying to uh, make the point that it was a, a retail service, and I'm assuming it was because of this table of uses here. Well, retail use right is as like distinguished from convenience store, correct. which is what it is now. Correct. But that didn't exist before, and yeah, you know, we're just maybe like a, a general commercial use. Oh right, there is no service right use. So you know, retail slash service is my stylistic uh, addition, if you will. Sure. So I think in reading the variances, it does seem like the thrust of the approvals was based on the the convenience store aspect of it. You know, in the 50s, it was everyone had to take the bus into the center and everything was closed at 6. 
um, in the 70s where the variants actually happened. It was so that uh, in as much as the variance was required, it was um, you know, so that he didn't lose his income. And then with the, ex with the confirmation of that in the 1982 uh, case, uh, one of the one of the factors was there wouldn't be an increase of lines of merchandise carried, and that a, a continuation of the use, you know, would be appropriate. But I think that a special permit under 7.2, at least for me, would get us there because I think that uh, all the factors that you enumerated about parking relief and everything like that, I think those definitely would help out with that intersection. But I think, at least in my mind, a special permit might be more appropriate so that, um, you know, not anyone that was doing any commercial use could just go in there in the future. You know what I mean? So having, having the, uh, the new occupant have the special permit and that if that were going to change hands in the future that they would have to come back and that we could make that determination that kind of reservation of future decision making would be important for me as opposed to just allowing it uh, under the variance that runs with the land. So Craft, crafted properly a, a condition set by the board uh, as part of a decision would certainly be something we would consider. That's all I have. Do you have anything to add from a town standpoint, Andrew? I do not, no. Well, I listed a few questions, and I think I've heard the answers, but I'm going to just go through them again, okay? You're done. My first question was, <laughs> I've seen tango trucks out there since I was born around this town. Uh, so you, you're, I think it's been answered that you use, you've been using it for parking, and you've been using it for some storage. That's fine. I'm, I'm sorry. Nothing else. No yes. more. Correct. No, yeah. Okay. Uh, I also understood that there were two apartments that were on the t on in that facility. Oh, there was a third floor that was added too. Was there not? One of my amendments to the submission that I mentioned during my opening remarks was that there exists only one apartment. There were in the 2008 variance. There was permitting issued allowing an expansion of the apartment dwellings above, but they, they were never acted upon. Okay. Can you tell me, uh, is there occupancy in those apartments at this time? So they live in the one me. Of them? I live there. Oh, you live there. I live there. You're me living. and my daughter, we live there. Okay. Yes, sir. Is that going to continue? Yes. So you're going to continue to live in there? Well, the apartment, well, I'm, so basically I'm going to be good moving. Should, should, he, should we swear him? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. We should probably swear you in. Just, stand, please. No, just, just a point of order. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Let him testimony Anybody else? Anybody, Anybody else, else that else thinks, thinks they may want to speak? Just in case. Well, then stand, stand up. Stand, stand up. up. Take an oath. I can do it. Just in case. Just in case. Just in case. Yeah. Yeah. No harm done. If you change it, if you change your mind, no harm done. But if you think you're not going to do it now, but you might do it five minutes from now, Mr. Oh, Kang, oh, I'll, I'll speak. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we're all good. <laughs> Testimony given for this board is the it will be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I do. Okay, so okay. Right. I, I've been living there for. for uh, oh, identify yourself. Oh, Gary Bonnerow is the owner and operator of PNSB yeah. 287 Wall Street. So I've been living there with my daughter for the last 14 years. Okay. And uh, I'm going to be moving to my parents' house. Like you said, I have a handicapped uh, uh, sister, and I'm her guardian now, and my mother and father are aging. My mother's in the early stage of dementia, so that's the reason why I'm, you know, mm -hmm. leaving. And Mark is, me and Mark have grown up together and been friends our whole life, and our families have known each other our whole life. And so I'll be moving and be renting it out, you know. Are you still going to be the owner of the property? Yes, sir. You will. Yes, sir. Mark has a, an option to buy the property. Okay. There's an option to buy it. Right? Yes. Right. right now, you are the owner, and yeah, I think that's in there, Dave. Right? Sure it is. Yeah. Our, our deal, our deal is in there, sir. Mr. Yeah. Reference. I made reference to it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I kind of did what Eric did. I went through the table of uses uh, <laughs> to try to figure out, uh, you know, what fits where. 
and uh, I had some trouble with it, but that, you know, I came to the same conclusion I think you did, that 7-2 is probably the best way to do it. Uh, I don't have any fundamental problem with what you're doing because it's going to be an improvement in a lot of ways to what's there now. I noticed the building's in kind of tough shape. I don't know whether there's any future plans to <laughs> fix it up or not, but uh, that's just my own opinion, okay? <laughs> I know. Sometimes you have to tell the truth. Amen. Okay? Uh, all right. Is there any other com before I open it up for public comment, is yeah. there any other uh, comments from the board? Okay, then I'll take this opportunity to open up this meeting to the public for any comment we anyone may want to present at this time. Does anyone want to uh, well, I'm, speak? I'm, I'm the closest. I'm Just speak up and give us your the name, please. Neighbor. And I have no objection. Okay. I just have your name, please. Jenny Bramante. Jenny. Anything else? No, I just, I'm here, I'm here sure. today. Sure. Thank you. Support. 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 Right. Thank you very much. Thank Anyone you. else? I'll do the same thing. I'm Carol Charest. I live across the street. And um, I'm on Interville Terrace. And I have no objection. Okay. Yeah. I think what they're doing is it would be fine. In fact, we see the three trucks. And at night, there's less traffic in and out of there. So we won't have as many kids or people, even during the day, we have a lot of cars coming in. And when we go to leave our driveway, because right I'm on the corner, try to get in and out of our driveway. Cars are coming into Interville, into their driveway, into the PNS to go to the store, which that was fine, but this will be a lot easier now for us if there's less cars coming in and out of it. Okay. Not that we minded, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> I thought Ronnie was going to get over the trucks. Anyone else? He's fine. No, you raised your hand there for a moment. Yes, hi. Uh, I'm Dan, Daniel Brokowski. I live in Grove Street, right across from Gary. I've known him for a while now, my wife and I. Uh, I came here just for some information, basically, just to get an idea of what was happening to the change. Uh, and uh, I wanted to know whether there was going to be an ownership change, so uh, that was clar clarified, and whether the residential part was going away with the change of variance, but that was cleared up today. Uh, I have no issues. Uh, less traffic in, in that area would be a big help as well. So uh, it is uh, especially morning and uh, evening commute uh, gets pretty uh, uh, congested over there with traffic. So anything to alleviate that a little bit is more than welcome. Thank you. Anyone else? If not, I will close the public portion of this meeting. Uh, I have one, just one additional question for Tango. Yes. Um, <laughs> what are you specifically going to be doing in that facility? I noticed some of this mentioned showroom. Yes. What are you specifically going to use that thing for? Exactly. So um, right now I currently have my office down at 45 High Street, right near the train station. So my, my office will be there at the facility. Obviously my, my trucks are where my... Uh, employees meet in the morning, will gather and send off from there. And the portion now where Gary operates the convenience store, so my office will be in there and I'm going to do the entire store over. As you notice, needs a little facelift outside and inside. Don't take it personally. No, that's a good thing. I'm working the, <laughs> on the selling price there a little bit. But uh, yeah, <laughs> the, the inside of the store is going to basically be set up as a house. Okay. There'll be bathrooms, kitchens, um, so when my, you know, potential clients can come in, they can take a peek at the, the quality of work we do and um, you know, stuff like that. So uh, right now, I would I don't know how many people visit there, but probably 300 people a day ish. Uh, summertime's much busier. Right. Now, but you know, if well, if 10 people a day came in, I'd be happy. So I don't think it's going to happen, but. Uh, so it's going to be the volume is going to be down a lot, but basically going to clean it up, refresh the place, bring it up to today's codes, uh, same as the signage as you said. Um, everything will be of the you know pull permits with the town to speak to Mark and uh, see what's allowable. But th that's pretty much the gist of it. Will you use that for school? There'd be storage too. Yeah. So when 
mock uh, when um, Dave hit the nail on the head. There's really nothing in there of much use. It's kind of like uh, junk, I, I want to say junk, but stuff that you might use twice a year. So there's but not going, much. But going forward, it will still be used. Oh, that little section was going to be um, taken care of. But yeah, the little section would be left over of like a, a winter coat closet that you touch once a year, something like that. But no supplies. We're not dropping stuff off and stuff like that. So. Okay. Okay. We're a little out of character here, but sorry, well, I'll, 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 I'll take your comment. Uh, uh, Mark, how many yes. uh, employees do you have? Uh, uh, six. Called and two secretaries. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other further comment from? About conditions, but well, one condition might be the one that was just brought out about any future changes have to come before changes in ownership or just more. I don't know. Yeah. Are there any, I would well, say changes of use, maybe. Yes. But they, but they have to do that's, that anyway. That's in the bylaws. Yeah, that's anyway. right. They have to do that anyway. Yeah. I, I'll just start with I don't know that okay. it's appropriate to attach any conditions to it. I mean, unless anyone wants to suggest anything that I can't think of, I mean, I don't see any reason to restrict One question I was going to ask you before was when you started out your presentation, you said it's really green apples versus red apples. I guess well, the, what's the distinction other than color? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you brought that up. Go. <laughs> and it's funny that. that so <laughs> simple question, uh, simple answer. Okay. Sim simple answer. Rather than potato chips on the shelves, there's going to be plumbing fixtures and and house finishes on the shelves. <laughs> so you know, different retail um, scheme in the operation. Um, you know, if, if, if I could, you know. If you need me to help to make a suggestion on the on the form or uh, motion or you know, I'm, I'm certainly open to discussion and would obviously defer to the board. But if you need my help, let me know. What I'm hearing and I, uh, is that uh, using 7.2 as the section of the bylaw that seems to be most appropriate. I think we've been I, I think there. as a most sorry. recently. We've used that in, in yeah. continuation yeah. of uses as, as, as being yeah. the most appropriate use I think so. in this Just particular case. case. I think right. as a matter of course, uh, you know, obviously, the less conditions that are placed on it, the better for my client. However, anybody looking to change the use again, who comes in to see Mr. Yes. Dupel, yes. would likely be sent right back here. I'm not speaking for Mr. Dupel, but I, I would imagine. just ask him what color apples they have. <laughs> <laughs> you like that, I bet. <laughs> a little bit. Um, but, but, you know, certainly, you know, please let me know what I can do to help. If there's nothing further, I will entertain a motion. Uh, Bob, would you like to get us a shot at that? Uh, sure. Yeah. Uh, I will... Uh, I'll go ahead and make a motion uh, in the uh, case of number 19-25-26. Forgive me if I'm reading it wrong here. Is it? Uh, is it? 26. Yeah, 26. Uh, and that the applicant is uh, asking for a special permit under section uh, 7.2 of the zoning bylaws in order to uh, ask for a special permit under 7.2 in order to uh, uh, allow a change of use uh, from a convenience store to a plumbing store at the uh, uh, location of uh, 287 Lowell Street, uh, uh, Reading, Massachusetts, uh, uh, in accordance with the the plot plan, or at the location shown on the plot plan, uh, prepared by Sullivan Engineering Group, uh, 
Woodland, Massachusetts, dated uh, November 11th, uh, 2019, uh, entitled uh, 287 Lowell Street, Ready Mass, plot plan of land, and stamped by John Sullivan, uh, professional land surveyor. And I think that's the only document really we have to uh, maybe put a stamp on uh, to do that. Uh, uh, in, in seeing under 7.2 that uh, the reason I will give that uh, we feel that that's, that's the uh, applicable section of the bylaw is that uh, uh, the board does not feel that there will be any, uh, there will be no substantially, not a, a more substantial detrimental use to the property than what is already there now. Uh, so there'll be no, it'll, it'll still be non-conforming, but there is not a uh, increase in uh, detrimental use to the property at all. Should we add that? Uh, I can make reference to that, sure, and I'll make reference to, I didn't see that, the uh, uh, renovation plan uh, paid by, uh, it's okay, uh, can that side? <laughs> Uh, is architectural plan layout yeah, plan whatever his name is yeah, yeah. Right. Oh, that's Let's see. <laughs> okay Hillary might be familiar with them I don't no. know. <laughs> can you help us read uh, it's Evo Asturian. Yeah. Yes, that's it. Here we go. Okay. Avo Asturian, uh, yes. Avo. It's plan number A1, Mark Tango, uh, <laughs> renovations and plumbing, uh, proposed floor plan layout, and uh, on oh, yeah. that. Okay, well, that's what I see. So I'll make reference to that too. Yeah. Do you have a second? Second. Voting members of the five you see. All in favor? Five zero zero. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Let me stamp, let me stamp these. Uh, this just a, a point of order to, to clean up the application. Do I need to withdraw the other avenues and prayers for relief? I don't think so. They were advertised. Good. So. Thank you. I don't know. think so. It was advertised, but yeah, we didn't employ it, so. I think it was an and or. or. Right. right. Yeah, it was. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Get a stamp plan here. Here, of course. Yeah. Okay. He gets to write that one up. Thank you. I was working I'll write to try to I'll finish I'll it for today, and so I would not do so. Them. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't understand. I nerve Why are my knees? This is me. Mr. Chairman, okay. My What's going on? I was going to keep cranking and the windows open. My dad was slipping. Yeah. No, we were right. 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 Already it's warmer. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Good luck. Do you need to take note of those days that I definitely have um, As we get closer, I can put it on the docket. All right. Just so All right. Since you said last time to make sure you have it on your thing, I was like, I have tickets. I've already booked. <laughs> Oh, yeah. My in laws are in Bulgaria, so we have to go there. I go like once or twice a year. So, yeah. Uh, north of Greece and Turkey and south of Romania, so on the Black Sea. Thank you. Black Sea this summer, and then we have a lot of mountains as well. So we go skiing there. <laughs> Well, since Cy won't dismiss me, I'll dismiss me. <laughs> <laughs> Officially, you are dismissed. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs>
somewhere in here, somewhere in these drives. I can't do here. math, and you guys can't read. Great. Fight the board here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Roll so like, <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Well, this was fine. My knees were <laughs> early stage of frostbite. I was not understanding half. <laughs> okay, the other drawing is in here somewhere. Alright. Did you get it? You gave it to me. No, I gave it out of my bag. Out of your bag. Out of my bag. But we didn't originally get it with the packet. I, I had to print mine the out. The pop plant. Yes, yes. Yeah. Come on. It's gotta be. has got a pop plant for you. Yeah, a pop plant. Did you need the, the full the sheet as well? Must have. Did you need? This is John awesome. I got that one. Oh, did it? Not saying much. <laughs> Okay, that's in the package. All right, done. It's All right. Town meeting. <laughs> <laughs> we have a set of minutes. Yes. To review. <laughs> I think it's the same set of minutes we looked at the last time. And it's been fixed up. 10-2, I believe. I don't know. I don't think so. Oh, so. no, that's why we can't. We postponed it. That's yes. Right. Yeah. We postponed it. I was hoping to get 10-16 done for this meeting, but I did not. <laughs> You forget. Right, you did. Yeah. We did. So we're looking at uh, October second. Right. Okay. Uh, has anybody already looked at it? Yeah, or? I have, and I had a, a couple of comments. Uh, page one, I didn't have any comments. Well, I did. Okay. You want to hit page well, one? Well, it's, 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 he's identified as Andre McNichol. Oh. Right. And others present. Oh, yes, you're correct. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> Andre. <laughs> okay. Yes. Go ahead, Bob. Okay, sec second page. Uh, let's see, what did I have? Uh, oh, uh, just before the uh, start of uh, case 1909, uh, on a motion uh, by Mr. made by Mr. Pernice, seconded by Mr. Riven, the Zoning Board of Appeals moved to extend we didn't grant a special permit i believe we extended the special permit previously granted for a period of one year in that particular case that was an existing permit that we granted an extension to so they could finish the project is that not how you read the motion move to grant an extension of time move for one year on the special it says permit. we moved to grant a special permit well, we had already granted that special permit. Right, it says grant an extension of time. Yeah, I, I, I wrote it. We, we moved to extend okay. the special permit previously granted for case number 1816 for a period of one year. Then Let's see, Walker's Brook Drive, third paragraph. This so would have read the petitioner's written request, which stated that they would be withdrawing there. Well, what they did was they requested to withdraw their application without prejudice. We granted that. Mm -hmm. So they requested that as opposed to they said they would do it. Uh, and uh, let's see. Uh, town council. Uh, ne next to the last paragraph on that page, 
Okay. Town Council, isn't that a CL instead of SIL? Yep. Okay. And then the last paragraph, Mr. Gutierrez stated that he had a draft decision which was drafted, I would say drafted, by town employees, Andrew mm -hmm. McNichol, Julie, and Josh, with Josh Latham, mm -hmm. attorney for the applicant. Because I, I read that it's almost town employees and then Josh, Josh Latham's not a town employee. Yeah. So I wanted to clarify that. And that was kind of, that was drafted by that, and then we approved it. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. So that's it's just clarifications, and mm -hmm. then uh, and then uh, let's see. Do we need to clarify? And I guess this would be the same thing when we. Get into the next case there, which would have been, now that's the same thing, 1919 now. Uh, Mr. Coutet opened the public hearing, opened up the public hearing, and then the next sentence or next paragraph says he closed the public comment. Uh, I think I would, he opened up the public comment, no public comments were forthcoming. Then Mr. Coutet closed the public thing. So I, I mm -hmm. just, just for clarification that no comments were forthcoming. Mm -hmm. And maybe the same thing on the, let's see, on the next case, which would be 1923 again. No comments forthcoming, and then we closed it. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Gautet entertained a motion to approve the request for a special permit. Uh, on on that particular case, the last page. Sorry, what was that? Not approve the draft decision. It, it was a request for a special permit on that one, with conditions added. So I think I think that it was kind of like cut and pasted from uh, the other one, the draft decision. But you, did you see it, Andrew? No, sorry. Where are okay. you? Okay. Uh, oh, the last sentence. Last page, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. When we, uh, Ms. Coutet entertained a motion to approve yeah. the request for a special permit with conditions added, rather than accept the draft decision. We didn't have a draft decision that, for that one. Mm -hmm. And that's, that, that's, that's what I have, yeah. I don't know if anybody else has some comments. Oh, you picked up all the ones I have. Yeah. Yep. Anybody else? What's up? Okay. I'll go ahead and make a motion uh, that we accept the minutes of October 2nd, 2019 as amended. We have two seconds now. <laughs> he said the words oh, first. Oh, he said it. You, yes. I, I made the motion. We yeah, a second we'll over there. The okay. record can reflect Hillary. Uh, second. I will second. All in favor. <laughs> okay. Five zero zero. Okay. Uh, one other comment. Other thought. One other thing to bring up under other business. Mm -hmm. Did everybody receive a copy of an email from the town clerk on uh, the reading from the reading bylaw committee? Mm -hmm. I received one. When? Not, I was, can't recall, but I... Well, let me just read it to you. Okay. okay. Uh, it was addressed to the appointed boards and committees from the reading bylaw committee. Central bylaw article 3.3.1.3, residency required. Familiar with this? No. The Reading bylaw, this is addressed to all appointed boards and committees. Okay, they probably sent it to the They just sent it to me, okay? Yeah. The Reading bylaw committee would like to solicit comments from the other appointed town boards about revising the current general bylaw provision regarding residency requirements for membership on such committees. 
The section occurs in Article 3, Town Offices and Town Officers, under Subsection 3.3, Appointed Boards, Committees, and Commissions, and is entitled 3.3.1.3, Residency Required. The Reading Bylaw Committee is performing its ongoing review of the bylaws, and this particular section drew notice due to the indirect language requiring that appointed board members be residents of the town. The article now reads thus, residency required, any member of any board, committee, or commission who shall cease to be an inhabitant of the town shall immediately cease to be a member of the board, committee, or commission. As you can see, it does not directly place a residency requirement on appointed board members, but infers that residency is necessary by virtue of immediately disqualifying any member who ceases to reside in Reading. We have discussed this wording among ourselves and with town council, and the prevailing opinion is that it does require residency, but we are not of the opinion that this is the best way to codify it. Hence, we would like to revise it to be direct and unambiguous. At the same time, we would like to be certain that the intent of the bylaw reflects the intent of the town in this regard, namely, that non-residents may not serve as members of appointed boards, committees, or commissions. In our discussions, the bylaw committee raised the possibility that one or more of these boards might see a benefit of allowing non-residents to serve as board members under certain circumstances that they could envision. If so, including such a provision in the revision of Article 3.3.1.3 would be the proper way to raise this subject for consideration by town meeting. Hence, it was decided to canvass the boards to ask this question of them. Should non-residents be allowed to serve as members of their town board, committee, or commission, and if so, under what circumstances? They would appreciate feedback, and I assume they're looking for feedback from each one of the boards, probably from me as the chair of this board, okay? Mm -hmm. So I only bring it up to you guys because the question is, as I say, should the <coughs> residents be allowed to serve as members of their town board committee or commission, and if so, under what circumstances? First, I heard of it. I say no. I, my they position. Should be. Huh? I, I think it's quite clear in the bylaws. I don't think we even have to change it or anything. Yeah, my. I don't, I don't think give you my view after it. I, I couldn't envision else, not have. I couldn't envision having a non-resident on on a board. I I totally agree. I think you should be a I, resident of the town. Just looking at Andrew's expression of when you were reading it, yeah. it, it's almost like the first time he heard of it. It is the first time I've heard really? that. I received yes. this a couple weeks ago. And he, and well, he is, is a town daytime employee <laughs> that's in the planning department. And he's never heard of it. It's dated October 28th. So huh. I've never seen it shortly thereafter. Uh, might, might be good to have Andrew uh, make some inquiries on that. Yeah, that's, and if you do have a position as a unified board, I would be happy to relay well, those comments myself. You just heard <laughs> this gentleman. My, my view is I the don't same know if we thing. have to take a vote on this. I don't think we need a vote on this. No, my view is that you got to be a resident. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You gotta be a resident of town. A wealth of or serve uh, stolen, uh, you gotta be a resident of stone. Right. Yeah, we people. would never <laughs> have a, a reason to bring in anyone else. There's no one that's gonna have any uh, incredible credential or specialized knowledge right. that we can't get from the pool of qualified and <laughs> diverse reading residents. There's like I was gonna say, we have literally over twenty five thousand <laughs> people to choose from. You know, <laughs> so there's gotta be somebody out there who has the capability it, 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 and inclination to step up. I would, Why would you want someone else I, to make that I've decision? I've never heard of it, and Eric's maybe more familiar. Do you work with other towns? Yeah, no, a lot of times have they... Have you ever heard do of they talk any about other this? town or city having a non-resident on boards? Only ones that are like... Um, <coughs> city of Boston, would they do well, like transitionary towns, like, you know, like where, like in Chelsea, where I used to have an office. They have um, town personnel that don't necessarily live there that are on boards. Um, but you know, okay. I, I can't imagine that there's any reason. And they're voting members on a board? Yeah. And they don't live in town? Yeah. Oh, they work there? That's right. Wow. But I think that, um, 
I think the bylaw, you know, you guys nailed it. It already, it already implicitly says exactly. that. Exactly. And if they just want to make it like crystal clear and explicit, I'm all in favor of that. Great. Yeah. I'm not to me. No. It just the more words and stuff you add to it, it just clouds it up even more. Yeah. It's pretty right. emphatic. You have right. to be a resident. Period. End of story. Yeah. Right. If you work in the town, fine. Yeah. You don't reside here. You can't serve on it. That's right. Okay. Right. Speaking of that, with the changes that were made in town meeting, when do those take effect for the bylaws? No, no, how long do take? Okay. Zoning changes? Our zoning changes? Yes. 2020. January 1st, 2020. January 1st, 2020, okay. Yes. I don't really know if there, something like that came up in town meeting. No, I think they're asking that they would bring it to town, town meeting. meeting if maybe in the spring or something. Yeah. Huh? yeah. It'll Boy. take two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> right. If you want to give me Andrew a copy of that, and uh, I'll be glad yeah. to give you the whole he thing. He hasn't seen it, so he'd say, did you see this, Did you see this, Julie? <laughs> it came, it, I think it came from the town court. Yeah. Or it came from the bylaw committee, but I think I received it by an email from the town court. Mm -hmm. What is that? Hmm. I, think the, I think the expression well, that you ought well, to take well, back is this board's, the people on this board, not the board. The people feel. individually the individually right. feel that we'll just we send an email caps lock and o. that's it. <laughs> we can ask Nick. Nick did it won't be documented. I think it's pretty clear. Uh, did, yeah. Did, did I hear you say they want to make it more indistinct and ambiguous? I read it specifically from there. Yeah. So yeah, whatever I said is on that piece. Of well, paper. they had like a two prong thing there. They were asking if they do they need to make it more uh, or, or add to the bylaw saying you have to be a resident. And number two. Do you want us to include non-residents even? <laughs> no, we don't need non-residents, I don't think. There you go. Okay. Mm -hmm. Case discussion closed. All okay. right. Anything else? If not, I'll let the hand motion up. Um, I can just provide an update on town meeting. Our zoning bylaws okay. were passed. Um, footnote one as amended is now a special permit by the Zoning Board of Appeals. So 104 Salem, in cases like that, don't have to appeal a staff decision. It will be through a public process notification, and the board can make that determination. Um, it was amended slightly at town meeting to include some new language. We got our mixed use on South Main Street approved, um, so that will be Hopefully we'll get some good development on South Main Street. That's a mix of commercial and residential that you see downtown. <coughs> Verified some language on CBD to allow CBD in town, where it wasn't in the past. Um, so those have all been clarified and passed and amended through town meeting. It was a great discussion, great resident input, and healthy discussions. So it took some time, but <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, they were approved, so those will be in effect January 1st, 2020. Um, I don't. I can print those sections of the bylaw, so you can. Well, this whole thing has to go to uh, the state for the approval, general, and yeah. then once they approve it, then it'll become yep. bylaw. So, so I once that, I'll wait, I'll wait yeah, for that, I think we have to wait for that. Yeah. Okay. So once that process is all done, I can get you the relevant sections and add yeah. them, replace your existing bylaw. So um, that should come relatively soon, I think. So mm -hmm. other than that, I got nothing. Now I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Oh, I was going to get Hillary. <laughs> so moved. <laughs> now I know what to say. Hillary, so moved. Second? Second. All in favor? All right. Yeah, okay. Okay. Thank you all. Yeah. Thank you.